Ladies, at forward, a sophomore from Kingston, Ontario. Number three, Aaliyah Edwards. At guard, a sophomore from Hopkins, Minnesota. Number five. A sophomore from Croatia, number 10, Mika Buell. At guard, a senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas, number 13, Forward, a grad student out of Hungary, number 14, Darka Juhas. At forward, a senior from Winter, Georgia, number 25, Olivia Nelson. Guard, a redshirt senior from Salem, Oregon. Number 22, Avina Westbrook. At forward, a sophomore out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Number 32, Pia Gabriel. Guard, a freshman out of Milton, Massachusetts. Number 33, Caroline Duchamp. At guard, a freshman from Arlington, Virginia. Number 35, AZ Fun. Forward, a freshman from Williamsville, New York. Number 42, Amari DeBerry. And at forward, a junior from Austin, New York. Number 44, Aubrey Griffin. Assistant coaches for the Huskies are Morgan Valley and Jamel Elliott. The associate head coach, Chris Daly. And your head coach for the Yukon Huskies, Gino Oriama. Let's hear it one more. There it is, UConn taking to the court for their all-access time. We saw South Carolina earlier. And now, shockingly, the place still completely fun. In fact, I think there's probably more people here. Of course, Paige Beckers, you just heard it from the PA announcer, Jamie. She's from Hopkins, Minnesota. We talked to Stanford. 
before their game with UConn, they knew it would be somewhat of a hostile environment, a pro UConn environment, and it certainly is that. Let's stay there, though, with the local neighbor, the, the neighborhood superstar, if you will, Paige Beckers. Just one of three freshmen since the year 2000 to lead a Final Four team in scoring her freshman and sophomore year. Put in perspective what you're seeing from Paige Beckers and what it would be like as a coach to have her at your disposal. I'm going to tell you, it's like going to the ATM. You have those kind of players where you go to the ATM instead of a slot machine. You don't know what you're going to get back. <laughs> ATM, you know you're always going to get some cash. I love it. You're going to get that from Paige Beckers, and especially when it's go time. When Connecticut, the game is close, the game's on the line, Connecticut needs a bucket. Well, they go to Paige Bucket Beckers <laughs> to go get that for her team. And coming off ball screens, right? Going to the right, she is money every single time. And it's hard, she's so deceptive too. She's so crafty with the basketball that she can, as she's dribbling, she's watching to see what it is she's gonna be able to take advantage of. And her shot is pure, it's fundamental, it's automatic, she knocks it down. She has the ability to make the game slow down for her. She's very intentional on reading the defense and taking what they give her. You very seldom see this young lady get rattled in the sense of making bad plays out of the ball screen action. But the fact that she's scoring the basketball at such a high efficiency at 49%, I'm like, sometimes there's games I was like, shoot more. Yeah. You need to keep yeah. shooting it. Right. Gino says that too. I know. And did you <laughs> see him like yelling? Yeah. Like, you need to shoot it. And she does because she's so accurate. And the other thing that she does a great Looks great with that net around your neck, and I'm like, honey, you make everything look fabulous. Let me tell you, Sid is the one who's had the privilege to do that in real life. <laughs> I just got lipstick on the net and, you know, look ridiculous. <laughs> but um, turning time was actually great. I, I got to admit, I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of young girls, y'all, yeah. uh, that are, like, into it. And I talked to London, who just joined her AAU squad. She's nine. I'm like, London, who are your favorite players? Paige Beckers, yeah, Haley right. Jones, Aaliyah Boston. Yeah. And she's so into it. And so, I mean, we all did it, right? Oh, like, yeah. It was just really, really special to be oh, amongst fans. I love fans. that. I, I want you to I say that. I said we. Oh, okay. Not I thought me. you were know, like, Y'all know I can't play the basketball. But I do want, I want to ask you that because I love that, right? There was always someone that inspired. I played softball and I loved Lisa Fernandez. Like, who was it? Who was your Paige Beckers growing up? Um, so I, 89, born 89, I remember the W coming to B. And it was Cynthia Cooper for me and Tina Thompson. Y'all see me all the time with my red lipstick. Shout out to Tina Thompson, who was probably the first woman that I remember seeing with full lips with the red. Yes. Um, and so that certainly literally bled onto me figuratively, figuratively and literally. But I honestly remember when Coach Pack won. Like, I remember watching NCAA women's college basketball being like, wow, like, she just won a national championship. And for me, growing up in Prince George's County, where there are tons of black professionals, I don't know that the greatness of who she is and what she did 
dawned on me then. It wasn't until now that we started working together and we do the net worth piece that it really, really grasped them. I really, really began to grasp it because I just saw a woman being excellent in her industry and achieving at the highest levels. And so I remember that Purdue squad. I'm pretty sure when we first met, I was like, oh my God, I remember your Purdue squad. Like, I remember that. I remember the Orlando Miracle. Like, and so for me, like I tell Nikki this all the time, in college, we were right at the cusp of the social media thing. Yeah. So it would be like top lists of like basketball players or whatever. And I remember my teammates, we were looking at one one time and we started talking about coaches yeah. that could dress. And it was like, y'all know Nikki Caldwell at UCLA slash LSU? Yeah. Like Nikki always be dressing. I think you did the fedora on the side. Oh, wait, the look at the hair on yes. That's some hair, baby. Look at the bangs. What's that bang doing hey, here? Y'all don't like a match because it would sure enough go up in flames. It was full of hair spray. I remember that, though. Like, we were, I, that was huge. I remember that. That was so dope. So. Well, Carol, Carolyn coached me yeah. at Tennessee. And, and so I was like, oh, I want to be like her uh -huh, one day, uh -huh. right? And, and I, I'm, I'm going to date myself. Um, I was a big fan of, of Cheryl Miller. Yeah. Because she was Cheryl. doing things <laughs> that you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so she changed the landscape of how women's basketball was going to be played. So then here comes the Lisa Leslie's and yep. the, the Candace Parker's or the Brianna Stewart's. And I like the small guards. Okay, don't. I like the small please? guards. No, <laughs> it's love. We haven't said one small it's guard. Yet. <laughs> Coop was a guard. Coop was a guard. Small, was a guard. small, small, small. Yeah. small. Just not big. Coop's not big. Okay, okay, I'll take yeah. it. I'll take yeah. it. Right. But, the, but the, no, she's not big. Great. She's not big. <laughs> hey, that, she could go to a bucket. Now. Okay, bucket. Bucket. but this one right here, when, um, you know, when you're in college and you're struggling and you're going through things and the thing that coaches really, the ones who are really good and she was great at it, is that they looked at you not just as the basketball player in the uniform. You know, Peck was there for all of us um, as as people. Yeah. And, and and that's what you're seeing. And that's why you've got all these young girls mm -hmm. to me. And, and I think it's equally important to say we have young boys who are now knowing these names. Yeah. You can now reel off these names instead of saying, you know, I love Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, or Kobe Bryant. Yep. They're saying, they're saying Paige Becker. They're saying Aaliyah Boston. And so I love that we are acknowledging that this is a game played by ballers. Yeah. Whether you're a girl yeah. or a boy, Absolutely. it's played that way. Absolutely. I mean, we mentioned a couple of players that I looked up to, Coach Brenda Fries in Maryland. Yeah. Christy Tolliver was yeah. my wow. favorite player. I remember yeah. watching in 2006, I was 13, so I remember watching her win, and that was huge. Sydney mm -hmm. Colson, yeah. another huge player that I looked up to. And for me, I think what's really special is women that, and Monica, you could probably speak to this, and, and honestly, Nikki, you probably too, for someone that I looked up to were people and women that I looked up to. Tamika Catchings was my biggest idol ever. And then you get in the industry, yeah. you get in this field, and yeah. you become friends with them. And so I think little girls or little boys, you know, they can look up to us and say, oh, you know, I can be on the same page as them. Absolutely. I can be on the same page as these players. It's just a really special time to be connected to everybody. Absolutely. Is that a page pun? I can be on the same page. page. <laughs> I, 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 I like what you did there, boo. I feel like I'm rubbing off on you. Um, but you do. You mention it, just the love and, and, and to see all these young girls. And as Holly said, too, the, the boys here as well, just supporting. This is the first time that the women's game has had an all-access practice like this. This is something that the men's game has had every year. So it's really cool to see that if you build it, they will come, right? It's yeah, not absolutely. brain surgery, and, and that's the deal. But when it comes to Paige Becker's and the perspective of Paige Beckers and what she's been able to do. Uh, one of three freshmen since 2000 to lead a Final Four team in scoring her freshman and her sophomore year. Really hard to stand out at UConn, right? When it's just a long list of dominant players. And alas, she has still been able to do just that, Coach. Well, and this is a player that had to take a pause during the season because of injury. Sure. And you wondered if Paige Beckers, when she came back, would she be the Paige Beckers before the injury? Let me tell you, she's shown me some toughness. And in the Sweet 16 game, she took a fall. But after that, it was like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. And she got up. Tested. She has gotten back to that Paige Beckers that we saw her freshman year in the beginning of the season.
a little bit ago. Needless to say, the crowd is still here. As expected, a very pro UConn crowd with, of course, Paige Beckers, last year's Player of the Year, being from just up the road here in Minneapolis. The final four started with four teams, and now we're down to two. The number one overall seed, South Carolina, facing the winningest program in tournament history in UConn. But they have had a five-year title drought, which is so ridiculous when you think about the standard that UConn has set as we officially say hello to you here on the set courtside. Monica McNutt, Andrea Carter, Carolyn Peck, and Nikki Fargus alongside me. When you look at Paige Beckers and what she's been able to do, we know she has been fantastic. Gino says he expects that she will always be good. But over the last three games, she has asserted herself more for this UConn team. Well, she's been the leader, and she knows that she's got to be that go player. Yeah. Gino has told her that. Because, look, when you look at the game of basketball, you got to have a strong move and then the counter move. And until your opponent stops that strong move, you don't have to go to the counter. And their strong move is hey, <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is, in that double overtime game against NC State, this young lady, yeah. 15 of her 27 came in overtime. You talk about somebody that was starving to get back here. Mm -hmm. And that's what she, the, her performance was. Yeah, echo, retweet, <laughs> all those things. I know, as much as we're talking about Paige, though, I think the team effort, the total team effort we saw from UConn, I think Aaliyah Edwards and Olivia Nelson O'Dota's ability to come up with key rebounds, mm -hmm. put pressure on Cameron Brink, and get stops in terms of using their size was also huge to what UConn was able to do. Well, and I think, Monica, to play off of that, it, it can go back to Paige Beckers in a sense because she is so unselfish. She does such a good job at getting everyone involved and instilling confidence in yeah, everyone, absolutely. a total team player that's leading them. She says, she told us that when she's in the zone, she feels like she can make every single shot on that court. But man, she loves that little mid-range shot too, right? Like, like once she's got that going, she can't get. We have another member of our team, Holly Rowe, who's joined right now by a special guest. Hey, Holly. Okay, well, I have a very special guest right now, Aubrey Griffin, who is on the UConn team, unfortunately injured right now. But what a special Final Four weekend for the Griffin family because her brother, AJ, is playing for Duke tonight. What is it with the Griffin family that has allowed both of you to achieve at this level and be on national championship caliber teams? I mean, my little brother, he's great. Like, he's been working for this ever since he was in high school. It was his dream to go to Duke, so I'm happy for him. All right, who taught you guys to shoot? Because the stroke is pure. Um, he, he taught himself. Like, he was always in the gym. He's a hard worker. He's always going, like, doing the extra mile. So, yeah. So you, you are both at the highest level programs in the country. You're at UConn, he's at Duke. What was something your parents instilled in both of you to allow you to achieve at this level? Uh, with me and my uh, little brother, we both work hard and we're always in the gym, just like working out and stuff, trying to improve our game. So that I would say that. All right, so are your parents down there? What's the, what's the family doing right now? Uh, all of my family, <laughs> all of my family's with my little brother, but um, yeah, all okay, I know if you were playing, they would have split up. I know it. I know it. But you're out injured. All right, we can't wait to see you back on the floor. But congratulations to you and your brother. What an incredible legacy for the Griffin family. Can't wait to see him play tonight. What a tough choice to have to make. <laughs> Literally, like, choosing between your children. Listen, we've got Gino Ariema mic'd up. If you want to join us, you can check us out on ESPN Plus and across all the digital platforms. And with that, we get it back to Reese and the game day crew. He has obviously touched greatness. I wouldn't know anything about that, but Holly Rowe is joined by someone else who certainly has. Hey, Holly. Well, when you talk about success on the floor here in Minneapolis, you talk to the queen who is part of the dynasty, the Minnesota Lynx, Sylvia Fowles. And Sylvia, how important and great is it to be in this building where you play and see the support 
that all of these fans have for women's basketball. It's almost surreal, actually. I just was having this conversation with a young woman about how good the support is here, and I'm just happy that we have the respect of all these people to come out and watch these young women go to work. Um, I think it's valuable to what we're trying to push in um, the future, and also these young ladies are talented, so I'm happy that they came out and support. What responsibility do you bear or pride do you take in that you helped build this interest here in this community with winning four WNBA championships and holding it down for such a long time as a great player for the Lynx? Um, it's just a confidence booster. Um, we only here to like set foundations. These girls here weep what we sow. And I think they're doing a really, really, really good job at showing other generations of how it needs to be done for us to be successful. Okay, I gotta get your take on two things. Gino Oriema, he coached you in the Olympics. Yes. Four-time gold medal winner. What did he do for you as a coach that you appreciate looking back? Uh, taking, not taking me for granted, I think. Um, and pushing me every day at practice is one of the biggest things. Uh, you never want to get relaxed, especially on that stage. Uh, but having somebody that's going to keep you on your toes day in, day out is something that he definitely installed. In this last Olympic cycle, it was John Staley, your right. coach. So how intriguing is this? I, I'm not going to ask you who you're cheering for because that would put you on the spot. But uh, <laughs> what did Don bring out in your game in the Olympics? I'm just being honest with myself. Uh, every day Don come in practice and she'll ask me, what am I trying to get accomplished today? And then I go out there and do those things. So just challenging me as well, but also just being a female and know what it takes to know how to talk to each other and know how to get things out of each other. I think also played a big part in it as well. Okay, there is a big for South Carolina who has broken some of your records. Yeah. Awkward, awkward. Miss Boston. Miss Boston. Oh, Tell me what you think about her game. I think she's phenomenal. Um, I'm just happy to see a big that come in with full force and full throttle and demand of pain. Um, I think she's going to be amazing. It's scary to think that she's only a junior, um, and I'm ready to see the damage that she's going to do in that league. All right, speaking of the league, WNBA, the draft is April 11th, selfless promo here on ESPN. WNBA season starts on ESPN and ABC May 7th. This is your final year. You have announced it. Um, tell me what the emotions and what the what the intention is for this final season. Um, at first, uh, if it was up to me, I would have rolled off into the sunset without just saying anything. Uh, but I think I got some good people in my corner and just wanted me to do it right. I think my goal is to challenge myself. See, can I do this thing at 36? How valuable can I be for my team, but also teach. Uh, the, the, young, the young women that I have coming behind me of how we do things here in Minnesota. Um, I haven't thought too much about it, so I, I give you an update on what that feels like once we get going. Okay, and then your teammate, Lindsey Whalen, became the first of that Minnesota Lynx dynasty inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Naismith Hall of Fame today, or, or she will be inducted. What were your thoughts when you heard that Lindsey was going to be a Hall of Famer? I'm not surprised, but I'm happy to be here to see it. Um, and the work that Lindsey done throughout our, our jobs and the, throughout the Women League and the, the legacies that she's leading, uh, leaving, um, I think that plays an important part to what we got to come in the future. All right, Sylvia Fowles, one of the greatest, maybe the greatest big we've ever seen. So much Thank love for this right? woman. So much love for this woman. Thank you. Uh, Elle. Holly, I'm sorry. You're over there working <laughs> and you're doing incredible interviews because that's what you do. And we are literally over here like hitting them folk. It's fine. I'm also ducking if you bucking. And I am ready to fight. We know UConn's ready to fight. We know South Carolina is ready to fight. Here's the thing, we've talked about this, right? This is a rematch from a game that we saw at the beginning of the year. It was in the Bahamas. That should tell you how early in the season it was. UConn starts out really well in that game, and then they go completely cold shooting, which is why we had such a lopsided score. Here's the thing, though. Gino does not lose to teams twice in a season. In fact, since the year 2000, thank you, Jenny, research ward. <laughs> since 2000, it has only happened four times that he has lost to the same team twice in the same season, and it hasn't happened since 2012, 2013, and that was against Notre Dame. So history tells us that Gino will be in control of this game. What does his team have to do tomorrow night to get their 12th national championship? I called that first game in the Bahamas that they met earlier right. this year. Yeah. South Carolina had uh, South Carolina had 11 turnovers in the first half. They cleaned that up. Yeah. When South Carolina can take care of the basketball, then they can make good things happen. You cannot allow 
opportunity after opportunity of off your mistakes because Connecticut will take full advantage. So if South Carolina can take care of the basketball and move the basketball and then attack inside because they only have really two true post players. Dorka Juhas is out with yeah. the wrist injury. Yeah. That means Avina Westbrook is going to have to play the floor. Now that could be a matchup problem, but Dre, you pointed out that, hey, Victoria Saxon can guard away from the basket. So that should not be a problem for South Carolina. Uh, for UConn, you know, one of the biggest things that I look at in comparing the two teams as far as who played South Carolina early in the season. AZ Fudd was a different player early in the season than she is right now, right? She has gained her confidence. She's almost doubled her production since she's come back from injury. So there's a lot of pressure on her as a freshman to produce. She's got a deadly shot. I think that UConn is going to have to knock down some threes to defeat South Carolina because South Carolina is going to get offensive rebounds. They're probably going to have more possessions. How do you make up for it? You knock down some threes. AZ Fudd could be a huge piece if UConn wants to beat South Carolina. And Gino you has. Three, you say threes and you know she's going to jump I'm, I'm, in. I'm over here like that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody um, said three. <sighs> no, I, the other thing that I want to add, and I think this is, is alluding to your point with Westbrook, Aaliyah Edwards. That's where I was going, yep. Her athleticism, yep. I don't, it, you, amen uh -huh. over there, right? <laughs> talk that talk, Nikki, we need it, go. Her, her athleticism, she had this one rebound where she came out of nowhere and it was an offensive putback and you're just like. You know what, the NC, come on, NC State? It, oh my God. It was like, where did that come from? That was a game changer, right? Mm -hmm. Nelson Odota, yeah. she had an old fashioned and one offensive rebound in the Stanford game, right? And that gave them that energy. Those two players, I know we're talking about the guards, the guards need to be great, but those two post players have got to match as best as they can what South Carolina post play does. And the ability for Edwards physically to get on the boards and help negate some of that, she's got to bring that. I think she can be an X factor for them. So I'll go back, skip a game a season ago, calling South Carolina UConn at, at UConn during the pandemic season. And in that game, Aaliyah Edwards, you could tell that she invited the opportunity to play against Aaliyah Boston. And UConn escaped that one in overtime. Paige Beckers hit a big time basket. This was a season ago. The Aaliyah Edwards that is playing in this tournament compared to the Aaliyah Edwards that you saw at the Bahamas, different players, yeah. completely different players. And I think Gino has talked about her having to understand how to use her power because she is willing to bang, mm -hmm. but you can bang and it's five fouls real quick and that's the wrap. Yep. But she's been so much smarter. Now, as she and Olivia Nelson Odota are going to have to contend with Aaliyah, the sneaky part to me is Aaliyah's willingness to dump off to Saxton on the move, Bill on the move. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to have to be so connected on that back line because if you let Aaliyah Boston feast in the paint on offensive rebounds, putbacks, and then she's dishing to her teammates sliding around. They have five players in double figures the other night. It's not going to be a good day for UConn. The discipline for Connecticut has to be there no matter where the double team comes from. Mm -hmm. If it comes from the post player, the guard has to drop. If it comes from a guard, you have to be able to rotate. You have to be able to scramble. I think the effort and the discipline that it'll take to try and limit Aaliyah Boston, to try and keep South Carolina off the boards, UConn's defense is going to have to be elite. I love that you mentioned sort of the discipline when you guys were talking about AZ Flood. I just kept thinking about the poise yesterday that she had and sinking those free throws down the stretch. Mm -hmm. And the game got a little maybe tighter than Gino would have liked. Yeah. She just stood up there. Nikki Fargus has also said <laughs> that her she said her shot was like perfect, and then she goes, "It looks like mine." <laughs> Holly Rowe, it looks like you're joined. Had a body right. Holly Rowe is joined by somebody that certainly knows what AZ Fudd's shot looks like and how fantastic it is. Well, we are so excited to be with AZ Fudd's parents um, slash coaches. They coached her growing up quite a bit. Katie and Tim, and I see you with that cell phone out on her free throws. How stressed out were you last night when she had to hit those big free throws? Um, she has consistently hit big free throws, so I think it's more like a calming method for me to take a picture of the first free throw and then spirit fingers on the second one. Okay, we didn't get this story in last night, and I wanted to so bad because it was against Stanford. Who is her namesake? AZ Fudd is named after? Jennifer AZ. Yes, a Stanford great, and um, she has really lived up to that legacy. You loved Jennifer Azey's game, right? Yes, I did, and you hear people all the time uh, with names thinking about people they don't want to name their kids after, so we went the opposite, and we thought of someone who had high character, high work ethic, and was highly successful. Okay, Dad, I got to ask you about her shot. Gina Oriama says she's the one kid I've coached where I think it's going in every time. Who taught her that beautiful shot? 
The shot is a replica of, of Katie's. Um, um, but I've kind of honed it, and that's like I fine tune it. We both were really good shooting coaches over the years, but um, it's definitely a replica of Katie's shot. And, and um, it's just like we're constantly tuned into where her shot's looking like. And if you catch us sometimes, we'll be gesturing like elbow up or legs or something like that because we, we know every intricate detail of that shot and you can tell when something's not right with it. But um, it is definitely a, a shot that was created by mom. Okay, give me some tips. Get any any young fans out there watching our show right now, give us some of the key fundamentals you taught AZ with the shot. Shoot the ball the right way every time. Don't shoot outside your range until you can shoot it the right way and a lot of repetition. Okay, she said you guys were coaching her so much growing up, but how have you been able to take your hands off the reins? You know, parents can be an issue these days with coaches. How have you taken your hands off the reins and turned her over to Coach Oriam and his staff? Uh, well, I, I think our mentality has been just to do it the right way and, and, and mimic and emulate what um, parents should be doing in the stands. And, and so we, we really do take a... Uh, a strong consideration to make sure we're cheering for every one of these girls. They're all working hard, not just AZ. We're not cheering just for AZ. It's a team team effort. Um, so we, we really just try to be a big, big cheerleaders in the stands and, and clap and scream and yell for each and every one of them for their successes and encourage them to keep fighting. Okay, Coach said that your daughter is a perfectionist. She wants to be good at everything. How do you balance out that with her mental health and making sure she's in a good place with high performance and not uh, being too hard on herself? We constantly check in on her to make sure that she's, you know, good mentally. Um, the perfectionist is a little bit of an issue because she doesn't like to step outside of her comfort zone and make mistakes. And so we just encourage her, like, it's okay to make mistakes. You're, you're not playing well if you don't make mistakes, but great players, let them go quick. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. She is a lovely, lovely young lady, and we are so pleased to meet her and cover her. You've been around forever. I've seen you at so many UConn games. You were at the Final Four, and I know that you were always waiting for her to have this moment. How special is it to be the mom in the stands seeing your daughter have this moment now? It is surreal. Like, it really hasn't even hit me yet. I, I get moments of emotion where I'm like, I can't believe we're here. Um, I mean, it just feels like she was just a baby. It goes so quick. So we have friends who just had babies, and we're like, hold on tight because it's a really fast ride. All right. Well, we are enjoying the ride. Mom and Dad, Katie and Tim Fudd, they are here supporting AZ and uh, really great advice for parents out there. Um, okay, so I thought that I loved AZ Fudd, but I love her parents too now. Oh my God, they're amazing. I, I got to right? shout out, okay, Mom, Katie, and Tim Fudd, but that's also Katie Smirkaduffy, okay, yeah. who was a bucket in her own right. That's right. Yes. A little bit of Hoya blood there, so Ayo. shout out to the good sis. Also, AZ Health. Y'all know where AZ's from? <laughs> the DMV. I know you're going to tell us. DC, oh, Maryland, and Virginia, you know what I'm saying? We just produce Hoopers. That's all It's in the water. It's in the water, absolutely. <laughs> right, I, honestly, as I'm listening, and you two are coaches, dream parents to have. Yeah. Of, yeah. a, of a player, is that like the best thing for a coach? Absolutely. And ones that you can communicate with that get it. Like you talked about, Katie Smirkaduffy, now Fudd, when she played, she was serious about that game, so you knew it was going to be in AZ's DNA. Look, AZ Fudd is shooting 40% from the three point Come line. Come on. 40%. And you're right. Like, she shoots it the same way every time. Gino Ariema told me in the Bahamas, she's, he said, that is a God-given talent, how pure her shot is. He said every time she shoots the ball, he believes that it's going in, and she doesn't shoot the ball enough. He wants another, that's another one. He wants to shoot the ball every time she catches it. Her shot reminds me of mine. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 Somebody look up Nikki's number. Is she ever 40% I did shoot a lot of threes in college. We ain't said a lot. I said, uh, but let me just say that. I, I did shoot a lot of threes, but not at the percentage that this young lady is. And, I'm, and, and Katie and Tim, I, I don't, they probably can't hear me, but Jennifer Azy and I are from the same small ho hometown of Oak Ridge. So Nikki Fudd would have been a nice name too for you all. <laughs> Are you no. serious no. right now? I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I'll I, listen. When I, 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 I but I love Jennifer AZ. When Jennifer. I when I don't have my next kid, I'll name him after you. Okay. Gonna, you know, not I, when I don't but, have my but next kid. I'm not, not going to go Nikki. I'm going to go Fargus. I'm just going to call my baby Fargus because what, that's what we need to do. What's really special too about is this team right is how much they embrace AZ. So when I watched them in Bridgeport, because I had them in that regional, we asked Paige 
what are you telling AZ for her first tournament? Like, what do you want her to know? And she said, I want her to know she should shoot it every time. That was yeah. the first she thing she said. She should shoot it every time. And then watching them in practice, AZ might do something wrong, and Gino makes a smart comment and gets on her. And then the team's like, AZ, you got it, you got it. Like, they rally for her because they know but how special she is. When a coach gives you the green, green, green light, Hello, it's now emerald. Green. That, her, her light is emerald. Uh -huh. Yes, that, that Gino has. <laughs> Yeah. Emerald. Emerald. <laughs> Emerald. That Gino has given her, she's got to step up. Mm -hmm. It is your responsibility to take that pressure also off of Paige, but there's no pressure on it. You're a freshman. Mm -hmm. Just go do what you do best, and that is score the basketball. I, I think that she has stepped up. I mean, as much as Paige was sort of the star in that overtime period, did y'all not see her come to the same spot yeah. three times and hit the jumper? Yeah. And then continue to knock down free throws, yeah. both in the Elite Eight game and in the game on Friday night. So I just think... Just like Paige had to work through an injury, AZ had to work through that foot yeah. thing. And so now I think we're starting to turn the corner in terms of seeing all that she has the potential to be. We keep saying what, what Gino keeps telling his players to do. You guys, we have Gino Ariema mic'd up right now. Oh, wow. Now. I, exactly. <laughs> uh, Reese Davis joked that we should get the dump button ready, but um, right now he's not saying much. Locked in, watching him shoot. But I will tell you, he says a lot in his practice. <laughs> Listen into him. You know? Who's going to be out of the fourth section? Where This is This is excellent. I love it. I'm learning so much. Well, here's one of the things that I think Joni, Gino Ariam is thinking. Like, for Connecticut to win, he's got to get guard points. Mm -hmm. For South Is Carolina, the corner, five minutes. Coach. Grumble, grumble. He can just point. He's gotten to the point of coaching where he can just mime what he wants. Sign language. This is this is the biggest tease I think I've been a part of in a long time. Yeah. What do you what, what were you think when when you were getting your team ready though, coach? What what were you thinking? Yeah, You're watching them practice. The practice? What, what's it feel like? When we were here on the day before having the practice, I was thinking, please don't let anybody turn an ankle. <laughs> Legit, real. Take yeah. your time. We need everybody back, and really just try to keep it loose and fun. Because you didn't want to, if I look stressed, it was going to be really conveyed over your players. Getting there. So we were like doing drills to have fun. To, you know, go do your razzle-dazzle layup, bring a little jelly, whatever you needed, just to have some fun, take the pressure off and release. And so you could go to sleep, get up tomorrow morning and be all about business. This is also a recovery day to some degree because this game tomorrow, he knows it's going to be physical. He's going to want the pace to be in his favor and get up and down. The day before a championship, You've done everything you need to do. That's why you're in the championship game. Your team is prepared. There's no more changing uh, deep what I'm going to do defensively. You already know how you're guarding play action. You already know what your offensive package is going to be. And quite frankly, um, having been in that situation as a coach, um, and I just remember Pat just had this, Coach Summit did, she had this calmness about her. And so that permeated throughout the team. Like, you're, we're going to be fine. And it helps when you have a Paige Becker. She's one of the best <laughs> players in the country. It helped when we had a Candace Parker. Right. Because at that point, you realized, <laughs> really, as the coaches, it's really not in our control. The yeah. control is controlling the practices and getting us there. But when that ball is thrown up, players go make the plays. Right. Go make plays. I mean, it's like, who said it? Kristen Williams said it it's for them to win their regional? We have eight, or we have Paige, and, and that's <laughs> it. Yeah, pretty much. Say that. We it's, have Paige, and they don't. Yeah, it's, it can be so simple. But we know that they have Paige. So the whole point of this All Access as well is to introduce some folks at home to maybe some players on UConn that they don't know. Give me someone else that you'll be watching for tomorrow night that you expect that could have a big impact. Well, I keep mentioning the bigs, Aaliyah Edwards, Olivia Nelson Odoto, but I also would say Kristen Williams, who okay. has quietly been very, very steady for this UConn mm -hmm. squad. And, and as they have navigated some of the injuries through some of their underclassmen, they expect to be stars. Here goes this upperclassman that has been here 
I can't say been here, done that, because we know about the drought, but has been in this program and is playing, to me, her best and most confident basketball that we've seen in a while. Um, I don't know that I've seen her play with this much confidence since she was an underclassman and had upperclassmen that she could defer to. Can I just throw a name in the hat? Nika Mule. Oh, come Defensive on. Defensive player of the year. Come big on. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the complexion of the game changes with her in there, and she's one of the toughest mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. players that's going to, that we're going to see tomorrow. And she's a player that doesn't get all the name recognition. She doesn't get all the credit, mm -hmm. but they're not here without her. Right. Well, she's able to come in and spare either AZ Fudd or Paige Beckers to get a blow. Yep. And when she comes in, the game doesn't drop off, and she can go in and make that play. She doesn't have to make several, just make that play. But I'm going to add another name, and I've been singing her praises all season long. Are you going to steal mine? Let me see. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let's yeah. think about it. <laughs> Evina Westbrook. Oh, Evina. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> Evina That's Westbrook. Right. Yeah. And here's why. I had a player on my team by the name of Katie Douglas who was a big guard who I could play at the four. That really messes up an opponent because then the other team has to decide, are we gonna play small ball or are we gonna try to use our size against their smaller guard that's playing the four? But Avina Westbrook is mean enough and tough enough, not just to play it offensively, but defensively. She could mix it up and you'll see her get low, get physical, cause she's a strong guard as well playing at the four. Yeah. Yeah, and Avina Westbrook has had to change her role. And I think, Absolutely. and just her committing to it and her ability to knock down shots, those three threes for UConn, those were big Huge. shots. That's yeah. that's big. Huge. She's going to have to knock some down because they might help off of Avina Westbrook. You might see that in the championship game. So she's got to be able to knock some shots down. Holly actually has more for us on Avina Westbrook. Hey, Holly. Well, guys, you know, she became the first ever transfer from Tennessee to UConn. Two hated programs, rivals <laughs> against each other. And, you know, when that happened, I was kind of like, wow, how is this going to go? Avina had been a starter at Tennessee. She comes into UConn, starts when she first gets there. But, you know, she's not starting this year. She has had to accept, to Drea's point, a very different role. She's coming off the bench. She's not the focal point of the team. And a player of her caliber could have pouted, could have felt some kind of way, could have uh, been resentful and handed the transfer portal. But Avina Westbrook has embraced the role. She's proud of what she adds to this team. And she does a little bit of everything. So whenever her number is called, she is able to provide in many different ways. And I actually talked to her two days ago about just how proud I am of the way she's evolved into a player that is team first. And she's really proud of who she is and what she adds to this UConn team. But one of the most unique transfer stories we've seen in women's basketball from Tennessee to UConn. And here she is getting ready to play for a national championship. And they would not have won that game without her because she is the best role player on this team and is doing it at a high level. Thank you, Holly. It's right. You, 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 Monica said it, right, when she hit us with a TTE, the total team effort. It just feels like with this UConn team at any moment, it could be someone else stepping up because for all the talk about Paige Becker, she doesn't even lead the team in scoring in the yes. tournament. That's Christian Williams, to your point. Well, it's the little things that go unnoticed with Avina Westbrook. Like, if you're unhappy with your role, you don't come in the game and sell out to fronting a post player. Yeah. You don't come in the game and sell out to rolling to the basket hard to get your teammate open on the backside, right? It is a complete show in my opinion or a complete example of how committed she is to her role to do some of those things. I've tried to front a post player. I've tried to front Asia Wilson. I've tried to front Elena Coates. It's not fun. Yeah. It's exhausting. And if, if you're not sold to what the team needs, you're not going to do those things. And she does those things. It says a lot about the character of Avina Westbrook. I would like to add um, that we have finally reached a conclusion. We now have the results of my producer, he's like, no, 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 we're not done. <laughs> Work with me, Pete. Work with me, Pete. Bye. I was spinning magic here, Pete. We have finally reached the results of what Nikki Fargus slash called the. Oh, oh, oh that up, baby. Thank you. Oh, let me see Thank those you stats. so much. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys take a guess before we give you the official number. Thank can, you. Can we? Can we start? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Look, go ahead. Can we? Uh -uh. Can we pull up my numbers before you got glasses? <laughs> 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 can, we, can we pull up? Can we pull up that I was in this? I was in the statistical category for the most made threes in a season. 
you were in the category. I, I, I was in there. Up. Top ten. Top ten. Most most made threes. Most made. Okay. Yeah. Hey, we can go right now. I know. Let's go. Let's go. I, I, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Let's see I'm these down. numbers. Okay. So, would you like to know what the number is? Would anyone like to take a guess before I tell you what the official number is that Nikki Caldwell shot for her career from long distance? Oh wow. I was gonna How say much? 36, Nikki. 34. I got 37. 34. 37? I got 36. And the winner is Monica McNutt with 36%. My good sis. I got you. That's fantastic. Give it to me. Give it to me. I got you. Do you see how nervous you are? Look at you. She's like Absolutely fantastic. If you're just joining us here on the All Access Practice, it's the first time we're doing this. We really appreciate you sticking around. South Carolina was a little bit earlier. Now we've got UConn, the crowd, still here. They're going to be wrapping up practice here in a little bit. As you see, they are taking a team photo right now. Um, we're not done here yet, but I just want to get you guys' thoughts again, because right now it's all conjecture, but about 30 hours from now, we will have tip in the national championship. So you give me one key for each team to hoist said trophy tomorrow night. You start with UConn, who's on the court right now. One key for them to win. They've got to be able to try to get Aaliyah Boston in foul trouble. Try to get Aaliyah Boston in foul trouble, okay? Get, I think you have to get to the free throw line. In their win against Stanford in the fourth quarter, they got their 15 to 17. Knock down some threes. Contain Paige Beckers if you're a South Carolina. Okay. There so, we go. Yeah. I'll get on the other side uh, what UConn needs to do to win their 12th championship. But for right now, we're going to get it to Holly Rowe because Gino didn't have much to say when he was mic'd up. But I know Holly can get something from him. Hey, Holly. Okay, Coach Oriema, you are here. Uh, open practice. It's kind of fun. People get to see your kids, your athletes. Tell me what you want to accomplish at a practice before the national championship game. At, at this particular practice? I know we're just doing drills for the fans, um, but what, what, do, what do you hope people see about your squad? Um, I just think they, they probably came to see the kids and um, uh, get a feel for, um, you know, what a team uh, likes to do, you know, how they like to get their shots and where their shots are going to come from. So hopefully in the game um, Monday, Sunday night, some of the same shots will actually happen and they can say, hey, they were working working on that the other day. That's awesome. I think a lot of people here know you are 11 and 0 in national championship games. You've never lost when you've gotten to this moment. What, what is it that you know about this stage, this moment that puts your players in the best chance to succeed? Um, I know a little bit about recruiting. Um, so you have to you have to try to come here with the best team. And if you feel like you've come here with the best team and you've done everything that you can to prepare, and if you treat every game in the NCAA tournament like it's the national championship game, then when you are fortunate enough to make this particular game coming up, you don't have to change anything that you do. I think sometimes kids, they weigh the games, you know, like, oh, this game's not that important, so I don't have to and then when the big game comes, every free throw means more, every pass means more, and they're not used to doing it that way. So, you know, and then you got to believe that you deserve it as much as anybody else. You know, and if you've worked really hard, then you believe you deserve it. If you haven't worked hard and you got here by luck, you're not going to win. You know, one of the things that has started to gel for your team, and, you know, so many injuries, so many players in and out of the lineup, but the one thing that's been consistent in the last month is defense. What is special about your defense right this minute? Um, well, we're fooling a lot of people and, um, you know, thinking that we're really good defensively. We're good. We're good when we need to be. We still, you know, we still struggle with the same things everybody else struggles with, but about two months ago, I guess it was, everybody bought into the fact that we're not going to shoot the ball great every night. But if we play at a certain high level defensively and if everybody buys into it, um, that we can win games where we don't shoot the ball well. And last night was a perfect example of that. You know, um, if, you don't, if you have kids that are committed to it. And plus, you know, when, you, when you're at a program like Connecticut, you know, you get a chance to recruit a lot of really good high school players. And every high school player that comes to Connecticut thinks they're a great scorer just because they scored 2,000 points in high school, you know? And then they get here and they realize that every kid on the team was a great scorer. You know? So whoever, whoever plays defense is going to play the most. <laughs>
They hit that basket as being a great scorer right when you said that, so that was great. Coach, before I let you go, I want to get to the game a little bit. Uh, you have had Don Staley. You guys have been co-workers together for Team USA. Uh, what, what do you think of Don and the program that she's built and facing her tomorrow? Well, you know, in, in, today's, in today's environment, um, it's not easy to be consistent. You know, kids come and go, and, you know, you're faced with so many different challenges that didn't exist before. So um, I think to be able to, to, be, to, be, to, to sustain it year after year after year after year, and it took a while to get there. You know, it's not easy. So I think Dawn built it on a solid foundation, you know, and each year their culture now drives the program, and she's part of that culture. She created that culture. So they expect to win. They, they believe that they should win. They believe this is their, this is their destiny, and, and a coach creates that. All right, well, we can't wait. The national championship. Thank you so much, Coach Gino Oriyama. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holly. Uh, the timing was really perfect on that shot. If they're <laughs> going to snap that five-year title drought, Let's UConn would have to beat one another one seed in South Carolina. If they do it, it would be their 15th win versus one seed, tying Tennessee for the most in NCAA tournament history. Again, thank you so much for joining us here on our all-access shows. We are so appreciative to have had you here. Gino Ariema having a little fun. He can have some fun as well. We will see you tomorrow night on